Oh, that's a nice big old butter hole. <laughs> Welcome to Mythical Kitchen, where food resembles your sleep paralysis demon. Today we're making Oreo biscuits and gravy, and we've broken that recipe down into three simple steps that you can find in the time codes right there. Also, we got the full written recipe in the description, and I swear it works. If it doesn't work, I will Venmo each and every one of you one dollar. Uh, it's Oreo biscuits and gravy. Uh, the internet is 99% cat videos and 1% Oreo recipes, so every Oreo recipe out there has been done, except for biscuits and gravy. So you get all that flaky biscuitiness with all that sweet cream filling, all the gravy that your life wants and needs. Let's get cooking. All right, so we're making our Oreo biscuits right now. We're taking a pretty standard buttermilk biscuit recipe, but we're also gonna blend a bunch of double stuff Oreos right in there, along with some extra cocoa powder. So, double stuff, oh, the feeling of just ripping open a fresh bag of Oreos. Um, full disclosure, over the last week, probably eaten in the neighborhood of what, two, 300 Oreos, and I am not tired of them. I will continue eating. First step, eat an Oreo. Uh-oh, this is gonna take a long time to eat. I'm sorry, guys. I need some energy drink to wash it down. Good buddy. Okay. So you're gonna take a full sleeve of Oreos. That's gonna go right in your food processor. And then you're gonna take your lid. Dude, yes! You did it the first time? That was the first time I've done it in the first try. You know what it was? I didn't think. I let instinct take over. And then you're just gonna run this. And then you're gonna get it all, the cookie's broken up, so it's not gonna obstruct the flour when you're mixing everything in there. It should be roughly the same consistency. Then you're also getting some of the fat from that cream. They're just gonna add extra flakiness. All right, so now that your Oreos are all dusted up, we're gonna take that. There's some chunks. Oh, I'm just gonna slow me down. Take a chunk out. And this is gonna go right into your flour. And then we're also gonna add our other dry ingredients. So we got some sugar going in there. We got some black cocoa powder. This is a really awesome product, especially if you're doing something like recreating Oreos. Because Oreos don't have like a brown chocolate color to it. They have this kind of like charcoal, almost gray aspect to it. And black cocoa is the key to that. If you can't find that, uh, just get Dutch processed cocoa. It's pretty much the same thing or the closest equipment you can find. Add that in there, along with salt. And then we got baking soda and baking powder. These are the leavening agents that give biscuits their rise as opposed to like a yeasted dough. So this is a quick bread. So instead of using yeast that you have to let bloom and blah, 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 proofing, this is gonna rise right up. And then you're gonna take your fork. This is the first time I haven't gone straight to using my hands to mix something and I use the utensil. I feel like we're learning here. One day I'll stop spitting when I talk and getting it in the food. So next step for biscuits, and this is very, very important. You need to take ice cold butter, you can hear how ice cold it is. And then you need to chop it up into small bits. So I'm gonna grab a nice butter chopper and then you're gonna cut this into cubes. So the reason you want to keep your butter in cubes, as biscuits cook, the cubes of the butter are actually going to evaporate and create nice little air pockets in there. When you're creating air pockets, you are creating a fluffier biscuit. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, nothing? No blood, we're fine. Make sure to separate the butter cubes as you're adding them in and make sure to not run your finger against the edge of the knife. And now you're gonna go in there and you wanna get flour in between each nugget of butter. Little buttery nugs. Anytime I'm tossing anything in flour, I assume I'm gonna deep fry it. So as I'm doing this, I'm just gonna, I was just like, these deep fried Oreo butter nuggets are gonna be great. Can we pivot this and just do deep fried Oreo butter nuggets? Drop a description in the description below. You're gonna uh, move the Oreos away from you so you're not tempted. And then you're gonna pour in the buttermilk. So you don't wanna go too hard with this. You want to kind of give it a nice tossing motion because that way you're not breaking up the butter. So now you can see this kind of coming together into a mass, but you still see a lot of the butter chunks. You got to roll out your biscuits now. So what we're going to do is you're going to shake off the biscuit dough from your hands, but pretend like it's just hand gestures. So we're going to flour down on our board here, and then we're going to turn out biscuit dough. What we're going to do is we're just going to mash it out with our hands and all the butter should just be kind of into that dough right there. And mash it out. Do I always breathe this heavy? So now that we have biscuits here, we're gonna use that knife and we're gonna cut this into quadrants. So this is actually going to create your layers in that biscuit. And then you're gonna put it on top of each other. And then you are going to continue to pat that out. <laughs> so now we're gonna cut the biscuits out. So you're gonna go ahead and take that biscuit cutter and then you got some nice biscuits and you're just gonna pop them on your sheet right there. And so now we got all the biscuits formed. We're just gonna pop those in the oven at 425 for about 15 minutes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the biscuits that are in there and then we're gonna cut them in half with a knife and then we're gonna sandwich cream filling inside. So it's gonna be like an Oreo, but then also they're gonna get covered in gravy. All right, so we have coconut oil going in here. Uh, Oreo filling, it is hydrogenated fats, which means it's probably some sort of like cheap Crisco vegetable shortening, uh, but coconut oil to me actually works a lot better in homemade recipes because it solidifies really, really nicely. So what you wanna do is you wanna really let your hands heat up that coconut oil, but then we're also gonna take these candy melts right here. You can also use white chocolate. This is pretty much just a highly processed white chocolate. It's like the American cheese of chocolate. And then you're gonna let those melt in your double boiler, which is just a pot that's set above 
of, no, it's a bowl. It's a, it's like a clear pot without handles. You ever forget what words mean? So it's a double boiler, so it's a bowl set on top of a pot of boiling water. The steam is actually going to heat up the bowl, so you're gonna prevent your chocolate from getting scorched. You know what's great is the sugar in the coconut oil insulates your hands so you don't feel the heat. All right, so the candy melts, nice and melty, and so the heat from this is actually gonna melt the oil just enough to make it a nice paste. Go, go, go! You can really see it coming together, and it's starting to look like Oreo filling. You just gotta really get some muscle into it. So I do it, gotta get swole! They call her Swole Nicole for a reason. <laughs> Uh, my hands have looked like this the whole time. We got our Oreo cream and we're just gonna put that out on our bowl. The coconut oil makes everything so slippery. So we're gonna take this on our sheet pan and we want about a half inch layer that's gonna go in between all of the biscuits. So we're gonna pop this in the fridge because right now it's a little bit runny. We're gonna form into a square and then when you pop that in between the warm biscuits, it's gonna be perfectly melty. This is going in the fridge. Whoa! Is that a bird? Okay, so we gotta make our gravy. So we're starting with the same ingredients that we would use in a normal cream gravy, uh, which is very similar to what's called a bechamel, which is a combination of butter, flour, and milk. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna incorporate some sweet elements in there to kind of mirror the effect of an Oreo cream filling. So all we're gonna do right now is we're gonna melt our butter into that pot. So, okay, that's sugar. This is flour, they look similar. So we're gonna take the flour and we're gonna put that into the butter and then you wanna stir that immediately so no clumps form. And then you're gonna get this nice little pasty consistency that's called a roux. So our roux's been cooking, you can see it actually start to foam and that's how you know you're good to go with your half and half. I called it milk earlier, but this is indeed half and half, which to me, it's the same as milk. I feel like if you just lied to people and told them it was milk, it would have been fine. All right, so we got the, oh no. God. All right, so we got our half and half burning on the stove. And then you're gonna switch halfway over to a whisk. All right, so we're waiting for this to thicken up right now. All that flour is cooking in the milk, making it nice and thick. We're gonna add that white chocolate. It's gonna give it some extra body and then some powdered sugar just for that sweetness because we are making a sweet gravy. Then just a little bit of salt. The last step, typically in a cream gravy, you'd have some black pepper. Instead, I'm gonna take an Oreo and I'm just gonna crush it up and then it's gonna look like black pepper in there. Then we're just gonna sprinkle some of that in there. And it actually does look exactly like a black pepper cream gravy. And you're just gonna give it a taste. And then you're not gonna put your tasting spoon back into the pot. We're learning hygiene in this kitchen, finally. It's taken a while. No, thank you. This is for all your hard work and telling me, Josh, don't put things in your mouth that other people are gonna consume. Let's assemble that Oreo. So we have our Oreo biscuits. These are out of the oven and we're gonna take one and we're gonna slice it in half and then we're gonna sandwich it with that cream filling. So all we're gonna do is take the Oreo and then we're gonna gently insert our paring knife and you're gonna run it all the way around the Oreo. And look right there. Oh, that's a nice big old butter hole. <laughs> Don't ever say that to a person. So we're gonna take our biscuit cutter and now it's become a cream cutter. And then you're just gonna use your hands. Okay, so we bake four and I'm only using one because um, this is a game of numbers, right? Like uh, in the wild, say a cheetah has four cubs. She can only expect two of those at most to survive because cheetahs have natural predators like the, uh, the mountain gorilla. All right, so now we're gonna take our cream center, we're gonna load it up on that biscuit and you got your giant cream filled Oreo biscuit. That just needs to get topped with gravy and then you can just shove that right in to your butter hole. So now we just need to take that Oreo biscuit sandwich, <laughs> claw it from the top and then our gravy is ready to be poured on top. Look at that. Wow. So we got all that delicious cream filling and then all the warm biscuity topping on top and then that warm cream on top. This is gonna be an absolute textural delight. I'm pretty excited. Can I eat this? I need to just spork right into this. I don't know which angle to, it's all so pretty. I don't want to desecrate it, but I know I have to. All right. Uh-huh. Look at that, there's a big Oreo. Look at Oreo. The crazy thing is it eats exactly like the hybrid of a biscuit and Oreo. Cause you get all that warm gravy and you get that super flaky biscuit pastry, but then there's also just like a giant hit of absolute mega stuffed cream filling in there. This is stupid good. The little bit of salt in the gravy and in the biscuit like marries the two dishes together perfectly. I'm really excited for someone else to eat this though. Cause I need to know that someone else feels as strongly about this as I do. It's like uh, when I tell people to watch the George of the Jungle sequel, it's better than the first. Let's go feed someone. Hey, Caleb. Should I hide things? I want to be sporked too. What? Uh, want to eat something with me? Yeah. That's fantastic. So what we have here is the Oreo biscuit and gravy. Infused a bunch of Oreos into actual biscuits, made a cream filling, dumped a bunch of Oreo gravy on top. Mm, okay. Does this excite you? Oh, it does more than excite me. I'm so excited for you. This is good. Yeah? As I've come to expect from you. Thank you. I think the consistency of the gravy is really spot on, which like, 
texturally makes me register it as biscuit, but yeah. all that Oreo goodness pulls through. You're incredible. That you should be on the Food Network. I mean, you should be on. The we Food should network. be on the Food Network. Well, actually, we have our own network. Yeah, it's the Mythical Kitchen. Speaking of Mythical Kitchen, thank you guys for stopping by. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you make this dish, hit us up at Mythical Kitchen on Instagram using hashtag Dreams Become Food. I'll see you next time. I need a bite. Oh. You can cook up your own feast while wearing the Mythical Kitchen apron. Available now at mythical.com.